Eternal Father, I offer you the body and the blood. I first of all take this golden opportunity to talk to you. It's a privilege that God has given me to share His word with you. I want you to be attentive. I want you to be observing what I'm talking about and I want you to take it right the way it is. For it is a help in your life for now and for the future. I want to read from the book of Hebrews uh, chapter 10. Ch chapter 10. I'll be skipping but I start from chapter 10 verses 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Therefore, when he came unto the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou woundest not, but a body has as thou prepared me. I go to 10, verses 10. But by the which will we all sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man after he had offered that is twelve, but this man after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever sat down on the right hand of God from Henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his tools, his footstools. For by one sacrifice he has pre perfected forever them that are sanctified. I thank God for his a just God. He's a good God. As I told you before in other sermon. That when God created man and put him in the Garden of Eden, he had a plan for man. He had a purpose. Man was to live forever. Man was stainless. Man had no any sin. He was holy. And that's why when he was to be created, God himself reasoned out and said, that let us create man in our own image. The image of God is holiness. So the first man that was created was holy. He was privileged to have everything around him. He could eat whatever he wanted. He could walk, he could, you know, he was a friend to every so-called wild animals. He could sit near a lion. He had all the dominion of all the creation. After the man had sinned for eating the forbidden fruit that God himself told him not to eat, he was fallen short of the glory and the grace of God. He, become, he becomes a man without power and authority, a man without dominion over every creation. I say all creation. And because of his sinful nature that he had, God brought another way of sanctifying such people and cleansing these people. We can remember during the time of Moses, the prophet, God used him in many ways slaughtering goats, bulls, and all those because they believed that by shedding the blood of all these animals, those who were sinful were to be cleansed, sanctified, and justified. But as we understand the Bible, that this blood could not bring the sense of perfection to humanity. It had its own limitations. It could not do 
more than it, it, it did. And that's why God had to have another plan. Because one, once a man was cleansed by this blood of goat and, 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 and bulls, he had to go back to that sinful nature. He was not totally cleansed. It was a problem. Yes, Moses could slaughter more than 100 to 200 goats in a day. But all those for which, for, for whom these goats were slaughtered could go back and swim in the ocean of sins. So it was like nothing happened to them. There was no conviction. There was no inspiration. There was no spiritualization. There was nothing in their life that they could realize. There was no any tangible evidence that their life was changed. And that's why God had to come with another methodology. And the methodology itself was bringing Jesus Christ himself to die for the sins and integrations of, for all the integrations of human beings. Human beings originally, after sinning in the Garden of Eden, he became a sinner. So he had what we call, he has what we call original sinful nature. And that is what the man had. So God himself had the second son. He said that I cannot let my people die and I have the second option. That's why God himself brought Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life, shall live forever, shall never test death, shall live forever. And that's why we got to be saved in order to get into that eternity. After bringing Christ himself here on earth, people never received him as the son of God. In fact, people rejected him. People never believed that from such a background, Messiah could come. From such a background, a king could come. From such a background, the Savior could come. From such a background, somebody of such a high hierarchy could come. Somebody with a, a distinguished and impenetrable or prowess could come. But I thank God. Because God disapproves the knowledge and the wisdom of the wise. And it brings up those who are weak and makes them become the tools of his working. That is God we are serving. I thank God because of war of whom he is. Let me tell you one thing, my brother and my sister. After all that Moses did had failed. But I want to tell you that God never fails. We are serving a God that never fails. He brought Christ as I told you before. And the blood of Christ himself had to be shed at the Calvary. The blood that was shed at the Calvary was meant to sanctify. And the Bible says that whoever has been sanctified by the blood of Christ is fully sanctified. He will never be unsanctified. He becomes, to, he becomes immediately oh, with elements of holiness. We sing some nature, some images of godliness. We sing that what he does is really resembling some of the attributes and the works of God. We sing that he becomes a man of his own entity. We sing differences in his own life. That is what the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for. I want to tell you one thing, that regardless of what type of sin you have, whether you have slaughtered a human being, whether you have teased or mocked a human being, whether you had belittled a human being, whether you had snatched somebody's land and you are still existing, whether you mistreated the widows and the orphans, and you are there getting me right. 
whether you are involved in corruptible activities, I want to talk to you today. Whether you are always guilty of the sins that you had already committed or guilty of those sins that were committed by your grandfathers and your grandmothers and your fathers and your mothers. I want to tell you today that however red your sins are, the blood of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Messiah, the Lion of the house of Judah, His blood is enough to make you become sanctified and totally sanctified. The blood of Jesus Christ is enough to cleanse you. And when I talk about cleansing, I mean the total cleansing. That is what I'm talking about. Many people die because of the guilt they have for the sins that they have already committed. They are guilty because of how people look at them and what people say about them. They are guilty because of what they are passing through. They are guilty because of their sociological background. They are guilty because they never went to school and people went to school. They are guilty of whatever things they are doing. They ask themselves questions that they don't get any answer. Sometimes they go to an extent of talking to God, asking God that, God, why did you create me? I want to tell you one thing, that God has never made any mistake. God is always right. And that's why I say he never made you by mistake. He never put you here on earth by mistake. The only thing that you got to know that living with Jesus Christ as your king is the only solution to your life. After receiving Christ, all that you sing will be a gone case. And the new things shall come on your way. And you will be a new creation. Oh, the new assurance will get into your own way. And the old assurance will have to leave you. The old things that had already embroidered me, embroidered you, will go away. But the old the things that God already promised about your life will come on your way. And that's why I say that the blood of Christ is there to wash you and you become clean and clean. That's why the Bible says that however red your sins are, the blood of Christ is able to make them become as white as snow. And that's why we talk about the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ is able to do all this. Unless you give yourself to God. And ever you say, no God, I'm getting what you're talking about. Today, I have to submit myself to you. I got to give myself fully to you because I've already got it right that all the sins that I've already committed can be forgiven, can be washed away by the blood. Yes, by the shed blood of Jesus Christ the Calvary. Talking about the blood of Jesus of the Calvary. Whether you are cast, doesn't matter who cast you. Whether somebody talked to ill of yourself and you felt like, no, why can't I commit suicide? That one cannot help you. Whether you got the spirit of rejection, everybody doesn't want you. That is not your problem. Let the problem be God's problem. God will like you. And that's why I say when God loves you and people don't love you, don't bother about them. Bother about God. Do the will of God. Walk on the path of God. And God himself will make everything turn around. Those who hated you will love you. Those who have been teaching you will love you. Everybody will be attracted to you. I know. I got a sister in Kisumu who said, who told me that everybody never wanted her. Even the parents, the biological parents, never wanted her. The our siblings never wanted her. Everybody Never wanted her. Even a place of work, the boss and those workmates never wanted her. And I told her that is not the, never think about that. That should not bother you because we love, we got somebody who loves you. We got, we got Jesus Christ who loves everybody. Receive him. Get him into your own system. Put Jesus in your heart. 
and everything shall turn around. And immediately after accepting Christ, he told me later, after two months, that those people who never wanted to talk to her started calling her, saying, where are you? Everybody was bothered. Even the parents were bothered, saying, where are you? It's long since we talked. And she was very happy. I want to tell you one thing, that Jesus is all in all. Whether it is financial problems, I know that people are now having financial constraints. I know people are now having social ties that do not make them rise up, but put them down. I know that people do not get what they expected. I know people never speak the language that they had dreamt of. I know people are doing things that they never thought of. But that is not the problem to God. God has got the power to bless you wherever you are. Whether you are doing what you never learned in school, God has got the power to uplift you from there. Whether you are an engineering profession, whether you are medic, you went to school, you took your years in school, you got it right, you graduated, but there's no job. You walk day, you walk night. You ask questions, no answer. People say that you're cast. No, I want you today just to believe in Christ and let the purpose of the shed blood be a meaning in your life. You shall see things turning out. People shall call you. All the interviews that you've already done shall be reviewed and you'll be called to work. You'll be a senior officer. Never think of things that do not add value to the life of, you, of, of, of yourself and to the life of God. I'm talking about the shed blood. Without the shed blood, there was no salvation. Without the shed of blood, there was no salvage. There was no redemption and deliverance. And that's why when the people of Israel were about to leave Egypt for Israel, where they are for Canaan, Moses was spoken to by God and was told that Moses, go and take a ram, slaughter the ram and the blood of the ram, Smite and everybody swore, everybody's door, and Moses did the same. But I tell you one thing do you know why the blood was shed? In order to deliver them, in order to put them away from the problems that encountered. The blood has got the power to take you from one glory to another. Because of that shed blood that was done in Egypt, the people of Israel were released for the bondages that they were indulging. Because of the blood of the Ram, the people of Israel were taken away from the land of bondage and from the land of suffering and from the land of belittling. They were taken to Canaan. That's because of the smeared blood. Yes, if you believe in Jesus Christ and say to yourself that I know that somebody died because of myself. Somebody was crucified because of myself. Somebody was butchered at the Calvary because of myself. Somebody's blood was shed at the Calvary because of myself. Why can't I make a step of faith and receive him officially as my king and my savior? I believe that the blood of Jesus Christ gonna wash me gonna wash me all the tranquilities all the problems all the things all things that i go through all the problems that i count in my life oh yes the blood shall wash them all and i shall be as clean as snow but i won't tell you not as snow more than snow, that is what I can add. 
And then the body that has been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ is no longer called a sinner. He is saved. Yes, he is a saint. He is a child of God. He's got the power to inherit all that are meant for him. He got the title to be called the son of the king. He is a prince to the priesthood. He is a prince to the priesthood. He is a prince to the kingdom of God. He is not what he is, but he is what God has made him to be. He is whom he opposed to be, but he is somebody whose proposal has already been, uh, been accepted by God himself. It is a matter of getting the proposal. I say, God, I'm a sinner. It's no way to decide it. It's no way to deny it. It's God to say that God, because of the conviction of the word, you really died because of me. You really died because of me. I want to give you a short story. Got a woman here who had a boy, a very small boy. Her husband already died. She remained with the boy himself. And after when, one day she woke up and decided to take a pail to go and fetch water. When she came with that water, on her way coming, she saw, she saw her house burning up. And the only thing that came into her mind, that I know my boy is dead. But as she drew near, she heard the voice of the boy. And people were there. Some were trying to put off the fire, but they could not. But you know what she did? She decided to go into the fire and rescue the, the, the boy. She went into the fire and she rescued the boy. She came out to the boy, life and kicking. But her own face, the face of the mother, was totally distorted. Yes! So one day, after the boy was already a man, not a man, he had already started going to school. One day, parents were going for visitation. And you know, his fellow students started laughing at him, saying that, look at your mom. Your mom's face is so bad, so ugly. Amen. The boy went to her mom and told her mom, my mom, why are you always coming here to visit me? Stay at home because my fellow students are laughing at me. And then her mom called him, put him down, started telling him that one day when I went to fetch water and coming back, I found our house burning and nobody was ready to get into the house, the burning house and rescued me. But because of the love I had for you, I went in. I got the baby, I got the boy, I got you, I came out with you, and you were well, well, but me, I was deformed the way you were seeing me. The boy started crying, saying, Mom, sorry, I never knew that you died. For, I never mean, I never knew that that was the cause of your deformation. I'm very sorry, Mom. And then from there, he told her mom that mom now come to school. Whenever time for the visitation, come to school. You know what? Christ himself died on our own space. We could have died, but he came and said, No, I cannot let my people die. I know the purpose of my coming here. I got to die because of these people. He had to let himself be slaughtered like a sheep. He was slaughtered, yes, until his blood was shed on the ground. And I want to tell you, the blood of Christ himself was so precious. I want to tell you one thing, that through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are all sanctified. For those who believe in Jesus Christ, his blood is ready to sanctify you. And you become a new creation. You no longer be called a thief. You no longer be called a sorcerer. You no longer be called somebody. Who does it wrong? Those names that you have been called, 
will all be washed away because of the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The blood that cannot be compared with anything. It cannot compare with the love of those who love us here or not. We cannot compare with the love that we get from our parents. We cannot compare the love of God with the love of those friends that we have. With our siblings. Yes, it's a unique love. I'm talking about the blood that was shed. Somebody willingly accepted to be slaughtered like a sheep because of the love he had for you. I want to pray with you. Man of God, woman of God, I want to talk. I want to pray with you. If you know that you're not saved, if you know that you're doubting your salvation, if you know that you're guilty of what he did, I'm bringing the blood of Jesus Christ in your life. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as stipulated in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16, that for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever so believed in him shall be saved. There is the time that, Lord, your blood is enough to save us, to wash us, to sanctify us. Father, look at that brother of mine, that sister of mine, who is always guilty of our sins. Father, I know your blood is still there. Wash him, wash her, forgive her all the iniquities that he has endowed himself into. Forgive him, forgive him, Lord. You are a forgiving father. Let him be one of your children. Love him. Let all the old go. And let all the new come in his life. I thank you Lord. Because you always hear me. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Believe that you have been washed. Believe that you are now saved. For those who might need to talk to me. After which. This is my number of contact. 07 400 87 57 5. I repeat the number 07 400 87 57 5. If you want to come to my church, my church is at Kibira Olympic stage next to Olympic stage. Use the number, call me. If you have any problem, call me through the number. May God bless you. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Eternal Father, I offer you